programa de residencia Caravan Thinking de Alexandria fa parte de un proyecto europeo donde son coinvolte diverse instituciones, tanto europee como egiziane, y que mira a crear y a reflejar su lo que es Alexandria en la relación con la Europa. El primer step de nuestro proyecto es seleccionar dos curadores internacionales con una conoscenza específica sobre la realidad egiziana. Abbiamo poi selezionato insieme a questi curatori tramite un open call eh, 16 artisti internazionali e dopodiché abbiamo lavorato con dei social entrepreneur. La figura del social entrepreneur è una figura chiave nel nostro progetto perché è una persona locale, una persona che conosce i movimenti sociali, gli attori sociali, le persone che stanno lavorando per una trasformazione di ognuno di questi territori e hanno eh, agito come una sorta di mediatori tra gli artisti internazionali e i locali. I think the essence of how we've developed the residency and how we've developed the program is to allow artists and other practitioners from various fields to kind of think through Alexandria and onto the world in a way. Um, and by that I mean to really sort of like lever the experience that we have in developing this program prior to arriving in Alexandria, like from being here together in Via La Città dell'Arte and then going together to Alexandria and from there on to like different cities. I think these sort of like lines of flight or continuity are kind of designed methodologically to encourage everyone to, to not sort of think in the sort of very sort of site specific ways only, but really to think about it almost like in a networked um, like fashion. Where do like Alexandria and Marseille really sort of connect? What are the points of contiguity between like Alexandria, Nicosia and Athens? Like where is Athens in relation to Brussels via thinking about it? through Alexandria somehow. And I think from then on to really imagine that this kind of like, um, yeah, sort of reverberates out into like a broader, like global context perhaps. So the curatorial framework that went into the conception of the Caravan Residency Program was really focused on trying to think with Alexandria through the prism of different contexts and entangled histories that took place within geographies in the Mediterranean, but also beyond them. We invited four different experts to engage with our uh, participants. Two of them focus on the contemporary and historical relationship that Alexandria has to revolutionary time. And the two others have more entangled histories and responsibilities towards the Mediterranean as a region and a seascape. We hope that through their visit in Alexandria, they'll be able to apply these expertises to the specificity of the Alexandrian context, but also draw parallels to other cities that they are both engaged in and they'll be visiting also as part of the Caravan Residency Program. I'm curious to look into this um, connection with the former Yugoslavia through the non-aligned movement uh, as, a, as a movement that started as a opposition to the central powers within Europe. Uh, and uh, yes, I found a lot of connections uh, through that and uh, going into this research, direction of research, but also just, yeah, um, learning so much about also the, the, the place which I didn't know so much about. And this is what, what is really uh, special about this project. Through the, uh, the, the city of Alexandria, we would like to question the contemporary understanding uh, of the Mediterranean scenario uh, with a critic approach. So the city, the city of Alexandria can, can be understood as a very Mediterranean city, meaning that uh, its history is strictly related to the, the history of the Mediterranean basin, but at the same time, it experiences problems and issues that are related to uh, and more wider neoliberal uh, um, processes. And also being from a city that's not on a port, uh, also Alexandria kind of represents a, a paradigm of change, of constant change. Um, and so these changes are obviously changes in the kind of structure of power on a, on a, on a bigger scale. 
uh, but also in the way that people think about themselves and also in the way that people access space. While designing the caravan residency program in Alexandria, a great deal of thought went into inviting local artists, whether researchers, urbanists, archivists, or filmmakers, that have witnessed the city's transformation over the past 10 years. The program had a special focus on the different and various representation of the city in cultural production, um, how storytelling and oral culture travel throughout the Mediterranean, but also like how can we collectively um, reclaim the city's infrastructure as a public asset rather than um, a heritage site based on nostalgia, which is the often indoor scenario. Um, how can we collectively uh, reimagine alternative narratives and how to, more importantly, um, think or imagine uh, possible futures? first day was uh, introduce the residents through a walking tour into the city center, the historic city center from uh, the Latin district uh, all the way to the downtown proper, then to Manchea, which is sort of the interface between the modern part and the traditional part, if you will, where the informal markets start to encroach upon or mix with the, the planned part of the city. The idea was to take the group outside and get an outside perspective and look at the regional context of Alexandria, including industries, ports, suburban development, new cities, uh, but also uh, some of the sort of the uh, salt lakes and the coastal regional development. So that was the idea. And then we did a full detour and we came back to the city center from the old uh, Minal Basal, the, the old port. Uh, so you can see sort of the, uh, how these old sites are being redeveloped now. My interest uh, or the interest I came with uh, to Alexandria was uh, specifically about um, climate catastrophe and climate change and uh, situations in which we can draw um, a connection between uh, the environmental and the social dynamics. Uh, so to me what was uh, very interesting in the first, were well, the first two days that sort of gave a general frame of the city because we visited first the, the first day the, um, Europe, the, like the part of the city centre and then on the second day we went uh, in the outskirts, more on the, I mean outskirts was very far away, on the west side and that's exactly the way I work. So most of the time I don't just focus on one specific context, but I try to connect it to many different elements that surround that context. For me, Alexandra is a, is a very uh, poetic city, or if I can say so. Um, so um, I think my, uh, my project will focus on how uh, to read uh, the space um, uh, that people gathered and uh, imagined the city um, and started certain activities or like started even um, um, certain social movements or um, political interventions um, and how this was connected to their imagination of, of Alexandria. We started visiting public spaces, gardens, and um, streets, plazas, squares, how those, um, how those like, architectural spaces also represent themselves and what does it mean in the current historical context and the political context. So right now I'm still in the process of trying to figure out threads and um, using this plant as a node to kind of like um, reveal hidden histories, hidden narratives. Um, looking at it in different perspectives but also when we visited the archives it was it was very interesting for me to see how the palm tree has been used as a symbol of the orient for centuries and because we looked at the postcards of the photographs of the families with fake palm trees or the paintings of palm, palm trees and so there's this also a very like symbolic and um, association of the plant 
So that's, an, that's also a thread that I might look into. After the two workshops, uh, I designed a scientific uh, program in Brussels in May for three, three artists, Leighton Community, uh, Nina Kurtala from Croatia and Omnia Sabri from Egypt. So the idea was to take them into the uh, three excursions connected to these three uh, topics that we were re relevant in the previous in Alexandria and in Biela. So the, the, the first excursion was uh, called, we, I said, we walked on the scars of uh, Brussels. The scars are, is, uh, the, the main scar is uh, coming from the destruction of the heart of Brussels in the 20th century or, um, with a railway uh, cut uh, that destroyed completely the memory, uh, the history and the memory of, of uh, the collective memory of Brussels. So the idea, to, the idea to work on this wound is also to see how people, inhabitants, activists uh, and also artists are working to heal the wound, to make it uh, lie, live, live again, to make these places live again. So it's a regeneration of the cut. This, so the second excursion was about water uh, the idea, so we went with a collective of activists called Etat Généraux de l'eau à Bruxelles. So we went on from the top of a hill um, in Forest, which is a municipality of Brussels, and we followed the possible way, path of water from the top to the down, down the slope. And on the way we met all these people who are looking after the water like a common good, like something very important to keep talking with your neighbor to save the territory, to create new narrative and made an, make another city and fight against, you know, destruction and uh, threats. <laughs> and the third excursion was about the decolonization. So we followed uh, Georgine Dibua, who is a Congolese historian. And uh, it was very interesting because we, she took us to the main places of powers, of power, the European district, the royal quarter, uh, and in these places of power, of course, there is a dominant story. Um, and also, she took us. We started from uh, an institution, which is Boza, where we are at the moment, and it was very interesting because through the material history, the history of the architecture, but the material, where does the material come from? The wood, the uh, she goes to the conceptual and she, op she, she opens our eyes to what is behind these things that we see, like a monument of Leopold II who is uh, made of uh, um, copper and tin coming from Congo and all the story behind. The diversity of the city, but also um how you can capture it in different layers. So like you can capture it in the way institutions work or people, but also um, the way there is so many diverse creatures and uh, different types of plants, uh, like how uh, it was in the Maisa garden, um, the national garden. Um, it was completely marvelous. I went there to um, uh, follow up with my research on the uh, Nymphia Carilia, the sacred blue lily of the Nile, and um, I was trying to find it in the uh, lily pond, and um, I was really like fascinated by the amount of um, different plants that can also that carry that are displaced, but like they now have their own. Um, um, complete uh, like uh, conditions that they can that, that it's the only place where they could find life uh, here but it's it was really really interesting and um, it's staying with me like I, I keep thinking about it like how 
Um, they're coming from all over the world and you can see them. We started in the beginning with the element of the water and tried to find connections between the cities around the topics of the water. So we started with the Alexandria and we started to see how to show how the water was an element that led to the ecological corruption. And when we came in Brussels, we started to think a lot about the element of the water, how the whole city of the Brussels built in the case of the water. Yeah, we had the chance here in Brussels to walk around a lot and uh, discover how the whole city of Brussels is built against the water and uh, very valuable meetings with uh, people, active community members and activists that uh, work in uh, this context. So this was a very good chance for us also to enrich <coughs> our uh, research uh, around the element of the water and how it affects human and non-human uh, ecosystems. Well, first I have to say that it's quite difficult to view your own city through other people's lens, through a lens in general. So, I feel like uh, I had to kind of step back and see how I could connect uh, Greece uh, and Athens in particular, not Greece, but to Alexandria, which of course there are some connections that uh, have to do with uh, colonialism, but also the um, uh, general movement of people through, through the Mediterranean. So generally I was thinking that because of Alexandria having a colonial uh, past, my idea was how I could reframe uh, uh, Athens and view it through this lens of uh, as kind of a territory of, uh, of, a, of a crypto colony, let's say, that is not as obvious as it is in other, of course, other places of the world, but uh, in Athens it's kind of a more uh, it's, it's, a, it's a quite of a complex issue, so I was thinking of uh, framing it in this way. And then throughout this process it was some issues that appeared, such as this collective memory and monuments, as well as monumentalization of certain uh, events or uh, certain uh, infrastructure that is monumentalized and the disappearance as well. So for me these were the main three kind of po thinking poles, let's say, through which the program revolves these three poles. So it was uh, the idea of colonialism and the colonial past and how it is perceived in Athens and Greece especially because it's kind of uh, very specific and think through new terminology about Greece because it's also kind of uh, uh, problematic to directly address it as a colony or so. And then it was uh, the idea of uh, memory and how Athenians save or reproduce their collective memory or projections and imaginaries that have uh, been imposed on them. And the third pole was the pole of the disappearance. So with this I tried to kind of unravel specific parts of the city that are, have been either vanished or uh, deleted uh, uh, by, by using force, either state force or uh, narration, uh, the force of narratives and narration itself. My current project for this residency is focused on, focused on the foundations of Athens and the myths of uh, this foundation, which is um, the all of Athena. Um, Athena is, a, is the Greek goddess of um, wisdom and uh, the symbol of Athens is um, the all of Athena, which um, at the end of every day uh, flies through uh, flies through the dusk and uh, gathers all the knowledge of the day to bring back to Athena, so that she's aware of what's going on in the world. And um, this knowledge production is quite interesting because as the all starts flying from Athens, it actually doesn't know what's going on in the eastern and southern. Um, parts of the world compared to Athens. Um, so I'm trying to understand um, how this idea and myth um, created a Western philosophical tradition and 
what the old does not see uh, and how this is reflected in non-Western uh, philosophical tradition and knowledge production. My starting point was were actual connections between Slovenia and uh, Alexandria, and my focus was on uh, like historical migrations of uh, Slovenian female care workers uh, that happened in the beginning of the 20th century. Um, on one hand, uh, they were traveling as uh, care workers to work with rich uh, Egyptian families, as nurses, uh, as uh, caretaker, caretakers of children um, and governants, uh, but also like organizers, organizers of domestic work um, in uh, these families. Uh, and it was quite a big migration that uh, involved, involved around 6,000 women and it led to the creation of small Slovenian communities in Alexandria at the time uh, that were all very related to the church. Mm -hmm. um, and this then involved uh, the creation of community spaces in Alexandria. I was very interested in exploring Alexandria as a landscape that uh, I feel has been often uh, characterized in a very uh, reductivist kind of way, very crystal clear perspective. And for what I'm trying to do right now in Athens, which is the second location I'm visiting, is to draw comparisons a bit about these two realities, urban landscapes, imagination of territory, politics of the space, and in general, how these two cities describe within what we call the Mediterranean uh, landscape. During this week of residency, I tried to organize several meetings with uh, different inhabitants from Marseille for the, the artist to discover the cities through the stories of uh, its inhabitants. And as the, the people we met were really different from different social backgrounds, different communities, social communities, or uh, living in different in various geographical areas, uh, it gives us a, a grasp of what, how the city is made by the different communities and inhabitants. I've tried to organize di several meetings with different inhabitants of the city, uh, coming from different backgrounds, different geographical areas, from northern neighborhoods to southern neighborhoods, downtown areas in Marseille, and I've tried to uh, tell the story of the city through the words of its inhabitants. Uh, what caught my attention in Marseille was kind of the connection historically between the center and uh, the rest of the city and actually how, how large it is, uh, how it evolves from north to south in very different ways. Uh, also going through the timeline of the history of Marseille to kind of understand uh, how things develop and the relationship between the north and the south and the waves of immigration that happened over uh, the many decades. Um, and to kind of see how all of that has sedimented in the present moment, how all of these things kind of uh, coalesce in a very contemporary way and how these are actually very um, uh, relevant and alive issues that are kind of happening right now. Uh, so that's kind of what caught my attention. So my research process, uh, or like my research interest, is uh, around how the layers of history are metabolized differently in every place and um, kind of formulate these living landscapes that we have to navigate in our everyday. The idea of unexpected brings you back to like what your expectations are of um, a place 
and it's something that I've been uh, thinking about a lot throughout this residency um, because I've never been to Alexandria or Marseille. This is my first time. So in preparation to coming to these places, I did a lot of like research and work in order to try to dismantle my uh, preconceptions and expectations of a place. Um, in order to allow the city to more like a fluently come to conversation with me. There is a kind of, uh, you can say, uh, non-chosen connection in a way, because I come from Alexandria, which is in a way a Mediterranean city and historical connection uh, connected to uh, the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire and also uh, later on to uh, the colonial uh, yeah, French Empire, if you could say. So there is a kind of a connection between, historically between the city I belong to and, and Marseille, in a way. And uh, what I'm trying to build is uh, connected to the questions of uh, diversity, identity, and also specifically the question of uh, local communities and, and violence, uh, and uh, how the act of violence have a different definition uh, in every part of the world and uh, what is connection to politics and the dynamics of power. Because uh, not only, I mean here, the violence, uh, uh, we could frame it easily in a kind of a militant violence. No, I mean violence between people, between groups, and how it functions and how it's economically uh, uh, shaped and why. We try to put more focus on walking tours because we thought that being part of the city is being in the city and walking in the city and seeing all there is in the city and uh, interacting with people in the city. And I think that this was an important thing from the point of view that it was not just people arriving in Kosia and placing them in an alien to the environment. We, we made them a part of that environment because, as Dimitri said, um, there's a complicated situation in Cyprus, historically speaking, socially speaking, politically speaking. And the only way to understand or, or grasp what is actually happening in Cyprus is to try and walk in the shoes of the city. Uh, it was important also to highlight elements uh, like the colonial traces in the city, the colonial past, or the uh, heavy um, uh, historical depth of the uh, heritage of the city, which is something that the two cities share, but also to see how and track, I think, both similarities and differences on how these two cities, um, geographically placed in the same neighborhood in the Eastern Med, uh, how, do those, how do those two cities kind of work with what they have or what direction this recontextualization of heritage took in the recent years, how this is being um, negotiated in the urban scape of the city and uh, how all these um, new approaches or recent approaches are being manifested uh, not just in the built environment but also in the um, atmosphere of the city in the way that the people experience the city in the way that each people experience each city so that was our uh, one more uh, strand that we tried to touch upon within that week This amalgam um, of Orient and Occident um, could create a, a new language, a language that, uh, that connects rather than uh, that uh, divides. I see Nicosia like an interplay of mirrors in which every act or object is uh, multiplied or even uh, distorted. A space of contact uh, reflections constant uh, um, fermentation that uh, connects the, the south, the north, the east and the west. Uh, a crossroad that uh, connects uh, three continents. I mean, I, 
in in Nicosia, but also in Famagusta, and a little bit in Limassol, you could see these amazing kind of syncretic and layered um, architectures. And you have, but also not only the conversions of the churches into mosques, and then vice versa, but also you have these really amazing moments of kind of new architectures that come up as this kind of again this kind of contemporary Cypriot post-1974 identities being produced and these kind of motifs appearing in different ways and the and you have these beautiful tiny relatively tiny walled cities with this kind of jumble of architectures kind of all colliding but then in the context of this incredible thing like in um, from Augusta, the main cathedral that's now this beautiful mosque that you have the orientation of the cathedral in one way but the orientation to Mecca and literally 90 degrees and so you have this yeah, spatial compromise that's really fascinating. L'idea di questo viaggio era proprio mettere in contatto artisti di diverse latitudini per lavorare e creare nuovi progetti pensando a quelli che sono i temi oggi più interessanti, più importanti, più pregnanti anche per la nostra realtà e mettere questi temi in discussione e in rapporto con la realtà di Alexandre in Egitto. Il progetto consiste in una serie di viaggi, diverse tappe. Siamo partiti da Biella e da Biella siamo andati ad Alexandria Da Alexandria in diversi gruppi gli artisti sono andati alle altre quattro città coinvolte nel progetto per poi ritornare a Biella e realizzare una presentazione finale che non è eh, di per sé una conclusione del progetto ma è un work in progress per far vedere, per presentare, com confrontare col pubblico locale quelle che sono state le idee, le discussioni, i temi che sono emersi durante la residenza. Dopo la presentazione a Biella questo showcase avrà altre tappe, una Marsiglia, una in Danimarca, ad Arus, e poi per finire ad Alexandria Egitto nel 2023.